Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com. In today's episode of The 10 Minute Gardener, we're going to be looking at the basic care of houseplants, in particular this Madagascar jasmine. And if you're not already subscribed to me at Learn How to Garden, there's a link directly below this film. If you click on that, input your email address, it means I can let you have a free monthly newsletter that has lots of useful tips and hints on things that are growing in your veg garden, fruit and houseplants. Also shows you exactly what courses and lectures we do here at Learn How to Garden. And it means that you get a much better access to the resources that we have on the website. What we have here is a Stethanotis, a Madagascar jasmine, Hawaiian wedding flower. It's one of my favourite plants to grow in the house. It's absolutely stunningly scented. Um, I love the scent of jasmine. I grow Trapospernum outside, I grow classic jasmine outside. And I was given this recently by some school children. I did a talk um, on vegetable gardening for them, for their school veg patch, and this was my present. And I thought I'd do a quick film on it, because it shows most of the problems that happen when people are given houseplants. It's in a pot that's too small, it's bone dry, it's filthy and it looks quite poorly to me. And I thought if I just shared with you some of the real basics with a lot of houseplants and this Stethanothus in particular, it probably will give your plants a much better chance of thriving. Because the environment in your house is really quite alien to them. It's very, very dry if you've got central heating. It has quite large fluctuations of temperature and it's quite dusty. And there's very little rain inside your house to keep the leaves clean. The first thing I want to do is put this in a slightly larger pot. And that's for two reasons. It's a climber and as you can see it's quite got a lot of roots here. Now, you don't want to overpot a Stethanotus because it will stop it flowering. On the other hand, I want to get it into a clay pot because that's much, much heavier and this is a climber and will form quite a large plant. So if I use a clay pot, it gives me more weight and it also means that I've got better drainage. A lot of the tropical plants, a lot of the subtropical plants need a lot of moisture but really, really good drainage. The soils drain well because they have water a lot. I mean a rainforest drains very well but it rains every single day. Which is why you need to try and keep the atmosphere more, more moist rather than them waterlogged. So I'll just grab a pot and I'll grab some compost and we'll talk about what compost we're going to use. If you note the pot isn't massively bigger than this one. Don't overpot. It's another common problem. If you overpot, you'll get a lot of growth but not a lot of flower. And into that you put a single crock. Don't be tempted to put lots of grit in to improve drainage. It doesn't improve drainage. It's one of the things I cover in my courses. It's a common sort of fallacy. And we're going to use a soil-based compost for two reasons. One, it's slightly heavier and it's the weight we want to keep at the bottom. And two, soil-based composts tend to hang on to their nutrients for longer. And if you're growing in a pot inside, you certainly need to keep those nutrients there. And to this, we've added about 20%, about a fifth perlite, purely to improve the drainage. Pop some in the bottom. And then the easiest way to find out how to do this is take out your plant and slide it down, take the pot it comes in, place that into your new pot and then all we do is fill round the edges with compost and that will give us exactly the right sized planting hole to put this root ball into. Once your compost's in just take your little finger and gently press the compost down. Twist the pot, bring it out, and there's your planting hole. Take your plant, in it goes, and then just gently, with your fingers, press the two together. I wouldn't at this point change the actual wire frame that it's growing on, because we want it to get established before we start pulling the frame apart. You can see that it's actually tied onto the frame by some string and it's important that you make sure that that string is not cutting into the actual plant itself. So we need to take this off. If you can hear the howling gale outside, I apologise, we're 
in the conservatory, which is quite nice, but it is howling out there. I find my glasses. And the reason that it's tied on, again, is from a commercial point of view, it's much better to sell these looking more compact. You can just move them easier, can't you? If you think about these going into a shop, if they're only nine inches high, they're a lot easier to actually move. If I unraveled this, you'd probably find that it's about three feet long. And with some plants, by bending them over, it actually gets them to flower early. Stethanotus are incredibly easy to actually take cuttings from. So once you've got one, you can actually quite happily produce lots of presents yourself. But if you didn't take this off, what would happen is that it will eventually, as the plant grows and swells, cut into the stems and then it will die. So, off it comes. The next biggest cause of plants not thriving is water. Not just how you water, but the water you use. I can't stress strongly enough that two simple things will make a difference. One, if you use rainwater, and two, if that water is at room temperature. Don't just get cold water out of your tap. The shock to the plant is quite significant. It's like putting you under a cold shower. And there are lots of chemicals in our tap water, so rainwater is fantastic. If you have a dehumidifier like this, the water out of your dehumidifier is great for your houseplants, much, much better than the water out of a tap. And as well as watering with it, the other thing that I use rainwater for, or out of my dehumidifier, is cleaning the plant. The plant itself, the leaves will get very dusty and very dirty. And those leaves are covered in pores, lots of small pores like your body, called stomata. In fact, most of them are on the underside of the leaves rather than the top. And it's those leaves that allow the plant to breathe <coughs> and allow the plant to actually take in carbon dioxide and excrete oxygen. So about once a month, take one of these little makeup sponge removers and wipe the underside and the top side of your leaves. I wouldn't recommend, you see a lot of leaf shine for sale, it's a bit like putting polish on, blocks the pores. What we're trying to do is get this as clean as possible, not as shiny as possible. It's a living plant, it's not just an accessory to be shiny in the corner of your house. It's very easy, quite quick to do, and that will just keep it nice and healthy. The other thing is obviously the watering. Water it so that the water runs freely out of the bottom of the pot, and then leave it to get quite dry, and then we water it again using rainwater. In the summer, when it gets warm, what I would suggest you do is take a uh, gravel tray, one of the saucers, fill the saucer with gravel, sit the pot on it, but make sure that the bottom of the pot and the water are not in contact, because what we're trying to do is get the gravel to just create a slightly more humid atmosphere around the plant. Don't place the plant next to a window if it's in the conservatory, because the cold on a very cold night can quite easily penetrate through that window, and the minimum temperature at night is quite important. We need to keep the minimum temperature quite high. If it goes below about 50 degrees, the plant will suffer. And when you feed it, feed it with a weak feed. Better to feed with a very weak feed more often than a really strong feed. 
it's a bit like grazing, you know, you're better to have a small amount of food regularly than one massive meal once a day. And that is really the basics to caring for most houseplants and this Madagascar jasmine in particular. Thanks a lot for watching.